Belladonna Cove is the worst neighborhood in terms of Max's mistakes and oversights, but it's still a really fun hood to play and it's one of my favorites. We don't have scripted events like we can find in the base game neighborhoods, and there are no locked in wants to give us guidance like we could find in River Blossom Hills, but once again, we do have the sim bios to work from. So today I'm going to show you my recommended playing order and give you some gameplay ideas for the families in Belladonna Cove. So let's get started. Belladonna Cove is a large urban neighborhood that came with the Apartment Life expansion pack. This was the last Maxis neighborhood released for The Sims 2. It is the largest neighborhood of all the six Maxis hoods in terms of both physical size and population. In fact, there are 11 playable families and three additional families in the family bin. Because this neighborhood is so large, I'm splitting this video into two parts. Today we'll cover the Baldwin, Cho, Riley, Cleveland, Contender, Cordial, and de Bateau households. Now there are a lot of really interesting facts, secrets, mysteries, tidbits, about Belladonna Cove, but that would require a video all of its own. Today we're just going to focus on the play order and gameplay ideas for the individual families. Before we start with the families, I would like to point out that there is a lot of Max's half-assery going on in this neighborhood, especially with things like memories and relationships and just a lot of inconsistencies. I would highly recommend if you were going to play this neighborhood seriously that you use Meet Me to the River's clean templates. She has fixed a lot of these issues and I would recommend you use her clean templates for all of the Maxis neighborhoods. I'll put a link down below if you're not familiar with these so go check them out. And finally don't forget to follow me on Twitch where I am streaming The Sims 2 three days a week. You can follow my link down in the description box. The first family I play in Belladonna Cove is the Baldwin family. Now I have to be honest with you I find this to be one of the most boring families in the neighborhood, which is why I play them first, but we'll try to give them a little bit of spice. The Baldwin family lives in the Tech Terrace Apartments, and it consists of Benjamin Baldwin, his wife Isabel, their daughter Sophia, and their toddler son Marcus. When we first load the lot, we find Isabel here with a want to have a baby, so I always lock this in for her. She's a family sim, and of course she wants to have more children. Isabel is also unemployed, but she has all the skills to reach level 9 of the culinary career. I personally feel that this was an oversight on the developer's end that they didn't give her a job and we will see this again with other sims in this neighborhood. So I like to go ahead and give her that job in the culinary career. You can do this with a mod by using Sim Blender, um, which is what I usually do, or you could have her check the computer and the newspaper and try to find the job legitimately. I don't consider it cheating because I believe that she was meant to have this job. The family is quite wealthy with 58,000 and simoleons, so I feel like her having a high level job makes sense. I will put the link to the sim blender down below in the description box. I'm going to purchase one here in miscellaneous miscellaneous for 10 simoleons and I'm going to choose more careers, adult career, culinary. Now this will put her in level one of the culinary career as a drive through clerk. I do not think that is suitable. I want to put her in level nine like she deserves. Now you can either leave her in level one and have her work her way up, but I like to put her in level nine right away. There are two ways you can do this. One is you can change it in Sim PE, which requires exiting the game. Or number two, you can wait until the newspaper arrives and you can cheat. So we're going to do that. Benjamin Baldwin always rolls the want to kiss Isabel, so I'm going to lock that one in for him. They can have a little romance before they try for baby. Benjamin is a successful inventor in the science career and if we look in his inventory we see that he has a Sim Santo biotech station available to him. This is the career reward for science. Unfortunately their apartment is so small there's not really much room to place it. The best place I've found for it is right against this wall next to the kitchen and you might want to move the painting out of the way but that still makes things pretty cluttered. You can choose to place this down or not. Little Marcus will often roll the want to learn to walk. I will lock that in so we can have his parents work with him on that during their first day of gameplay. Now, just like I did in Desiderata Valley, I play all the Sims for this one final day left in summer before I start their four day rotations. During this one day, I will work on setting the families up how I like them and achieving any of their important wants, such as marriages, trying for baby, getting jobs and that kind of thing. So the first thing I do is send Isabel and Benjamin into the bedroom for a little grown up time and he fulfills his want to give her a kiss and now he wants to flirt with her so I'll 
I'll go ahead and do any of these romantic ones that he has towards her. It's a really good way to get him some aspiration points. And then whenever they're done with that, they'll get in the bed and try for baby. Now, Benjamin does have to go to work at 9 a.m. So you don't have very much time. But if you hurry, you can usually get a little woohoo in before he has to leave. There's also a little bit of drama with Isabel as far as her uncle Carlos. So Carlos Contender, he's another playable sim in the neighborhood. He is Isabel's uncle and she tries to keep his romantic exploits private so that he doesn't embarrass her in the in her high society circles. When the newspaper arrives around 10 a.m., have Isabel selected, shift click on the newspaper and choose set job level to and choose the job level you want. I'm gonna choose level nine. Make sure you have testing cheats enabled first. Now, of course, some people might like to play with Isabel as a stay at home mom. Maybe she gave up her job in the culinary career so she could stay home and raise babies. That's also a really good way to go with this family. And I may eventually have her quit her job. Sometimes she'll roll the want to quit her job after she has a couple of kids, a couple more kids. Now, unfortunately, Isabel did not get pregnant whenever we tried for a baby. So I'll have to have she and Benjamin try again. Either tomorrow morning or whenever they both get home from work tonight. Luckily, Isabel has the day off today, so she's going to use this time to work with Marcus on learning how to walk and also potty training him. When Benjamin comes home, I'll have them try again for baby since they didn't succeed the first time. And no time. They've tried twice and have not succeeded, so I'll have them try again first thing in the morning. Third time's the charm. It's Tuesday morning and they're trying for baby for the third time. Now, in my personal gameplay rules, I only allow my sims to try for baby three times and then I consider the female sim to be infertile and I will allow them to adopt to fulfill that one. But of course, that's all up to you however you want to play. Hopefully she'll get pregnant this time. She did not. So if this were my game and I was playing, I would have the family now adopt a baby and I have a mod that allows adoption to fulfill the have a baby want. I'll link that down below. Now we're moving on to the Cho and Riley families. They both live here in the Sentinel Apartments, and I sort of consider them one family, even though they are two separate households. When we first love the Cho family, we find Vivian and her toddler daughter, Edsu, in their pretty large apartment. This is These apartments are pretty big. They're three bedroom, or it's technically two bedrooms and then like a bonus room, but you could definitely turn this into a third bedroom or a dining room or whatever. Vivian is a widower and she's also a family sim. She wants to get remarried and have another child. I always lock in get married for her because she'll roll the want to have a child plenty of times being a family sim. According to her bio, Vivian's husband died in the line of duty and she thought she would never love again. So when she met Timothy, she was surprised how easy it was to want to get to know him. She's impressed with what a good father he is to Sally and she hopes he and Etsu will find a similar bond. So her bio and Timothy's bio both allude to them being romantically involved. But if we look at her relationship panel, they're actually just friends right now. Now they are obviously meant to be together. So I will invite Timothy over and start working on their relationship right away. Timothy is also a widower and a now single father to a little girl named Sally. Timothy has arrived and we can see that Timothy and Vivian have three bolts of chemistry together. I'll have Vivian go ahead and put the charm on to Timothy, and it doesn't take long for them to get a crush on each other. I continue the romantic interactions until they fall in love. And after a little while of them flirting and making out, he falls in love with her. She is almost there, there it goes. Now they're both in love. So what I do from this point is have her propose engagement to him. She's trying to go take care of the baby who is outside in the rain or something, I don't know. I'm not paying any attention to her right now. <laughs> this is Vivian's time. So she's asking Timothy if he will marry her. They're two widowers. They're so similar. They get along so well and they're just perfect for each other. So I do not do the wedding while I am on Vivian's lot. Instead, I wait until I load Timothy's. That way she will move in with him and we will combine their households that way. Now I spend the rest of the day having Vivian take care of Etsu, working on her potty training and other toddler skills. Next, of course, I play the Riley household with Timothy and Sally. Timothy is another sim that I feel Max has overlooked in the career department. He's unemployed, but he has all the skills to work in the medical career as a surgeon. And if we look in his inventory, he has the medical career reward in his inventory. So once again, I really feel this was an oversight on Max's part and I give him the career in the medical field. His fiance, Vivian, also works in the medical career as an intern. Oh my God, Timothy, those are some, those are some lame moves, buddy. 
now Timothy's calling Vivian and inviting her over so that we can have the wedding. Now, I just want to have a little short wedding for the sake of brevity for this video. Um, if I was playing this family, I would probably throw them a wedding party or maybe even do a community lot wedding. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to do a little living room wedding with just the two of them. They've both been married before, so it's not that big of a deal to them to have some big fancy wedding. But what I did do is purchase a wedding arch and put it in the living room just so I can get that nice cut scene. And this is so sweet. Little Sally is trying her best to play the music for the wedding. She's not very good, but she's trying her best. And they're going to exchange rings. And this is going to be a very happy family. And it usually results in many, many children whenever I play these two. Once their family starts growing, I will usually move this family out into a house in the suburbs. And just like clockwork, Vivian has rolled the want to have another child again. So in order to consummate the marriage, we'll go try for baby right now. And here they go. They've been waiting a long time for this moment. They have not been intimate before their wedding day, and they were really looking forward to it. <laughs> And I did not hear a chime. It's so weird that none of my Sims have gotten pregnant. But anyway, this gives us something to work for for this family. Uh, Vivian wants to have a baby, so they have two more times to try. According to my gameplay rules, of course, you can do it however you like. And I usually don't have a problem getting Vivian pregnant within three tries. Next up is the Cleveland family. Now, this family has some potential for some seriously juicy drama. It consists of Jason Cleveland, his wife, Marissa, and their teenage son, Justin. Now, this is not the suit that Jason typically wears, but because of my clothing recategorizer, the clothing he usually wears is now in outerwear, and it just randomly puts him in an outfit. But somehow, I love this suit on him. It's perfect. So I'm just going to let him keep it. If he was wearing something really stupid, I would give him a makeover. So the story with Jason is that although he is married to Marissa and has a son, he actually has a preference for males. If we look at his relationship panel, he is friends with Jeff Rutherford, who is actually his brother-in-law. It's Marissa's younger brother. I think a really interesting thing to do is to get him into a relationship with Jeff and watch the sparks fall. That's just one possibility for this family. You can ignore the fact that Marissa is his beard and you could just play him like a normal straight sim, but where's the fun in that? His bio says nothing about this. His bio only says Jason married well, but he has his own financial goals. He's happy to have a partner in life with similar desires. If only his son would take things more seriously. When we first start playing Marissa, she has the want to kiss Jason. And in my mind, that's because she kind of feels deep down that something's off with their marriage and she's trying so hard to hold on. She's also a helicopter mom and she in interferes way too much in her teenage son's life. Her bio says coming from a wealthy family, Marissa has no need to work. She's too busy trying to make sure everyone's lives are all going according to plan. She loves her son and she's trying to make sure he understands the meaning of the word integrity, something her brother has never learned. Now let's talk for a moment about Justin. Justin is almost friends with Tara DeBateau. Justin's bio says he would love to live in his own life without his mother's constant interference. Why can't she be cool like Uncle Jeff? This military job that she's making him take on is taking time away from getting to spend time with his friend, Tara. He has the want to make a friend when you first play him, so this is a really good opportunity for him to invite Tara over and become friends with her. Justin's home from school, and he has the day off today from his military career. He's calling up Tara and inviting her over so that they can become friends. Oh no, and she turned him down. So instead, he's just going to call her and chat with her on the phone, and they should become friends pretty quick. And after a while of talking on the phone, they have officially become friends. Now I'll just watch his wants and see if he has any more wants towards Tara to work on the relationship in the future. Jason's home from work and he is calling up Jeff to invite him over. Jason is coming down to greet Jeff and Jeff is Marissa's much wilder, freer, brother. Uh, he doesn't care about appearances like Marissa does. He doesn't care about money like she does. They're really opposites. And there's something that Jason finds really appealing about that. Now, the way I like to play this is I like to work on their relationship over time, get them to a place of romance. And then I don't like Marissa to find out right away, unless she just happens to because I'm playing with ACR and they flirt right in front of her or something. But I feel like Marissa is the kind of sim that she would live in denial. She might suspect some 
something is going on, but she would never believe it because she has to keep up appearances and she will just live in denial of her husband's true self forever until she is just forced to acknowledge it. After dinner, Jason and Jeff went down to the hot tub and Marissa didn't really think too much about that. I had Jason check Jeff out and now they have two bolts together. If you like this storyline, but you don't like the idea of Jason being in a relationship with Jeff, there are plenty of other Sims that he could become involved with. And especially if you do randomized gender preference like I do in my neighborhoods, you could find a townie or even another playable Sim who did have a preference for males and work with that. There are a lot of possibilities with this family, but I just love the idea of, of Jason being gay and in the closet and being married to Marissa for so long and finally going out and being true to himself. So that's how I like to play this household. Next up is the contender family. This is Carlos Contender. He lives in a very large and impressive house in Belladonna Cove. He is also quite wealthy with 83,000 simoleons in cash. He is a Hall of Famer in the athletic career. It makes 3,000 simoleons a day. His bio says Carlos thinks a lot about his boxing days and what could have been, but there's nothing like a new romance to make him feel young again. Carlos's aspiration was originally romance. I don't know why Max has changed it to popularity. It is changed back to romance if you use the clean templates, which once again, I highly recommend. He has a lot of friends in Belladonna Cove. He is in fact a social butterfly. Right now he's pursuing Jessica Peterson. When we press play, he'll roll his wants and I look for anything that I could use in order to get Jessica over here. Right now he wants to entertain and talk. So I'm gonna invite Jessica over so he can talk to her and entertain her. Jessica has arrived and Carlos is going to tell her a dirty joke. I see him as kind of like a dirty old man. So I have him tell a dirty joke when he wants to entertain. She loved it too. <laughs> There's really not much to Carlos's family when you first play him. I usually just have him hang out with Jessica for a while and follow any of his wants that he has. It, things will get more interesting when we get to Jessica's household because then there's the possibility that we could have a baby between these two. And now for my absolute favorite family in Belladonna Cove, the Cordial Sisters. Meet twin sisters, Kimberly and Samantha. The purpose of this household is to show the new magic system, both sisters have befriended witches, one of light and one of darkness. The Cordial Sisters are somewhat a parody of the Pleasant Sisters. They had a sibling rivalry as teens. As they became adults, they have become friends. They have opposite personalities and even their house is similar to the Pleasant House. I'm gonna zoom out and show you. The layout is exactly the same. I'm sure you can see the similarities here. Even the terrible upstairs rooms are the same. Samantha here is considered the nice twin and she has befriended the good witch, Phoebe Adams, the infallibly good witch. She also wants to invite someone over. This is very important and I'm gonna lock this in now. Kimberly is considered the mean twin or the bad twin. She has befriended Francis, the atrociously evil witch. I'm not gonna try to pronounce that last name. She also wants to invite someone over. I'm gonna lock that in. This would have been an amazing opportunity for scripted events, but once again, Max has dropped the ball on this one. Now, another thing about Samantha is she has three potential love interests in the neighborhood. Armand de Bateau, Gabriel Green, and Connor Ware. She is best friends with all three of them. Kimberly, on the other hand, is only friends with Chastity Gear and Armand de Bateau. So let's start with Kimberly because the bad twin is always my favorite. Kimberly is calling up the evil witch and inviting her over. I think this is why the girls both have the want to invite someone over when you start because they need to invite their respective witches over in order to learn the ways of magic. Now she wants to woohoo in a closet. Oh my god, I have to lock that in just because that's fun. And her friend Frances has just arrived on her broom. Once she arrives, I'll have Kimberly greet her and then we'll click on Frances and choose teach me the path of darkness. And here she goes. You may now walk the path of darkness as a gift please accept this spell book and cauldron use them to hone your skills so that you may learn to create chaos and disorder wherever you roam she's now wearing the evil witch's garb and we get some messages that say i learned how to make something new i should check my spell book to find out more about it i learned a new spell in her inventory she now has a grimoire and
and a dangerous cauldron. I'm gonna place these things up in her room wherever we can find space for them. Now that we've placed her grimoire, we can click on it and we can check abilities, study the ways of light, study the neutral magics, or study the path of darkness. I'm gonna have her go check her abilities after she gets done casting a spell. I don't know what spells she's actually casting right now. Watch out, Townie. And now we can see the cauldron. This looks like a fire hazard. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good place to put the burning fiery cauldron on the carpet, but so we want to go to evil spells. Although she does have the ability to do good spells and neutral spells, Kimberly is going to be focusing on evil spells. So she can do spiritus, poultrya, oh, the spirit of the small and cowardly chicken, possess this sim that our laughter may thicken. She can do Mel Melifera Attackum, Attack with Bees, and Corruptus Locus. Bring the lightning and cockroaches. So I'm not going to go into a Sims 2 magic tutorial, but maybe we'll do another video on witches. Now it's Samantha's turn to get her abilities. She's going to call and invite her witch friend over to teach her the ways of light. And Samantha has actually rolled the want to become a witch. I don't think Kimberly rolled that once, so that's exciting. That's going to get her some aspiration points. And I love it when that happens because I feel less cheaty when I'm doing what my Sims want. Okay, Phoebe is here. We're going to go greet her. And before anything else can happen we're gonna choose teach me the ways of light and here we go she is becoming a good witch oh they have roaches out here maybe that was the spell that samantha was doing she now is wearing the good witch's garb welcome to the path of light where all strive to be good and pure as a gift we grant you the spell book and cauldron to help you grow and learn so she's learned a new spell as well let's get her stuff and put it up in her room there's a lot of empty space in this house so i most likely uh, whenever I'm playing them, I will make them like a spell room. We could turn this room or maybe this extra space into like a spell area for them to practice. And I would like to give them different rooms as well. But for now, we're just going to put it in their bedrooms. So we look at her good spells. She can do the Benamuda Sime, which lifts up a sim and takes their cares far away. She can do Creative Insecto. Volacris, I have no idea how to say these. Uh, bring forth friendly insects such as butterflies and fireflies and beautific beautificus locus, glad rays of the sun, summon laughter and fun, banish rain clouds and worse by the end of this verse. Oh my goodness, what's happening? The good witch and the bad witch are getting... <laughs> <laughs> the good witch and the bad witch are getting into a fight on the front porch. Okay, so the lesson here is you probably want to say goodbye to Francis before you invite Phoebe over or they might get into a fight. <laughs> So we're saying goodbye to our witch friends so that we can focus on the girls again. They both want to woohoo in the closet, so let's see if we can make that happen. We'll start with Samantha because she actually has some romantic prospects. And one fun way to choose a witch sim the girls will be involved with is to throw a little party and invite over all their friends and then see which one they're drawn to. So I'm actually going to have Samantha call and throw the party so she can invite all the guys over, not Carlos and not the witch. Witches, just Armand, Gabriel, and Connor. Then we'll have Kimberly call and invite Chastity over. And everybody appears to be showing up, so I'm just gonna watch the guys and see what happens. Okay, well, it looks like Samantha has chosen. She's just starting to kiss li kiss Armand lightly is what she just tried to do. And now she's trying to kiss this other guy tenderly. I don't know who it's gonna be. Well, Armand is telling her a dirty joke and she seemed to enjoy that. Let's see if things go any further. She keeps trying to do romantic interactions. She's trying to hug him romantically. Oh, here it goes. It looks like Samantha has chosen. She, they now have a crush on each other and they're in love. So you know what that means? It's closet woohoo time. And here they go <laughs> into the closet for some fun. So that leaves Gabriel Green and Connor Weir as, as possible singles for Kimberly. And then of course, there's also her friend Chastity if she chooses to go that way. So far, she has shown no interest in the other guys and has only been spending time with Chastity. I love this so much. After their woohoo, Samantha has the want for Armand to become a warlock. So that's definitely something I would pursue for this family in the future. He could become a warlock. They could live together, have little witchy warlock babies. It'll be awesome. Okay, well, 
I just heard the sounds of a crush and I looked outside and apparently Chastity and Gabriel just got a crush on each other. So it looks like Chastity is not interested in Kimberly, unfortunately, and Gabriel Green is now taken. So that leaves just one guy left for us here. And that is Connor. Let's have Kimberly go and talk to him. They have no chemistry. So unfortunately, I don't think anybody here is suitable for Kimberly. And she's not going to get her once a woohoo in the closet today. Hmm, there's always Francis, the atrociously evil witch. Our final family in part one of Belladonna Cove is the De Bateau family. So we've just seen Armand and he obviously is now romantically involved with Samantha, Samantha Cordial, the nice witch. Um, he is he is not romantically involved with her at the beginning of the game. If you were to play him first, he wouldn't be, but they just got together. So that's obviously going to be a plot point for us in the future. And especially because Samantha wants to turn him into a warlock. And I love that story so much. Armand is a business tycoon and he is also a single father. His bio says business has been good to Armand. He's made his riches and been able to afford everything he's ever wanted, including the best schools for his daughter. Now, Armand used to be married to Jessica Peterson, but whenever he caught her cheating, he divorced her. And it turns out she was never really in love with him anyway, and most likely just married him for the money. To console himself, he adopted a little girl named Tara. Tara is now a teenager. She has an excellent relationship with her father. They have a really happy life together. Tara wants to have her very first kiss when you start playing her so I'm gonna lock that one in for her and of course she is friends with Justin Cleveland so he's got to be her first kiss but it's 8 47 a.m. on Monday she's about to be late for school so I'm gonna have her walk to school and when she gets home we'll invite Justin over Armand is gonna be going to work in about an hour and he just rolled the want to get engaged to Samantha. So we're gonna make that happen as well. Now, of course, this would not normally happen if you didn't play exactly the way I did and have him get involved with Samantha. And that was up in the air too. She could have chosen another one of the guys. But because that's happening, we're gonna go ahead and do that here. He is a family sim. So most of the time, once he gets involved with somebody, he's gonna want to marry them, whether it's uh, Samantha or somebody else. Tara just got home from school. She's calling up Justin and inviting him over in the hopes of having her very first kiss. She greeted Justin in the lobby and it looks like they don't have any chemistry together. That's really unfortunate. Let's have her flirt with him and see how it goes. He seems to be accepting. Tara is really cute when you use some custom content on her. This Max's makeup is atrocious. Okay, he has a crush on her, but she doesn't feel the same way. I'm gonna keep them flirting and see if we can get them to first kiss level. She has a crush on him now, but they still need some more relationship before they can have their first kiss. Finally have the ability to have their first kiss right as her dad is getting home. <laughs> And I, I hope he's not going to come walking through the hobby while she, through the hobby, through the lobby when she's having her first kiss. So here they go. You can see that hideous green eyeshadow. Oh God. But seriously, get some custom content on her and she's super cute. So she just fulfilled her want to have her first kiss with Justin. They still don't have very good chemistry, so I'm not sure if this relationship will work out in the long run. Now Armand is home from work and he is calling up Samantha to invite her over so that he can propose marriage to her. So Armand is now asking... Kimberly, or not Kimberly, Samantha. I always get their names mixed up. He's asking Samantha if she will marry him. And of course she's going to say yes. And now she, once they get married, she will move in here with him. And of course he wants to marry, get married to her and throw a wedding party. I'm gonna throw the party right here in the apartment. I'm just because I don't really have any community lot stuff set up in this neighborhood right now. Well, the guests are arriving for the party and I just heard the sounds of love. It's Chastity and Gabriel Green. So I guess those two are going to be a couple in our playthrough here. So I just put the wedding arch in, uh, I don't know what room this is, in the bar dining room here. And Samantha and Armand are about to get married. Hopefully the guests can make it up here to watch. I think they're all the way downstairs. Oh, and I love how she keeps her witch dress on. That's like her formal dress too. <laughs> She's getting married in it. So 
now they are married, and uh, Samantha now has moved in with Armand, and she married a rich Sim. She's happy about that. And if I were going to play this family more, then I would work on turning Armand into a warlock and work with that storyline. Oh, look, and he wants to have a baby with her. I love it. Now they're going to cut the cake here, and she's just waiting for Armand to come over and cut the wedding cake. So I just want to remind you guys to follow me on Twitch, where I'm streaming The Sims 2 three times a week. Also, don't forget to get your Pleasant Sims merch, and that is down below. You can also visit my blog at PleasantSims.com if you want to know more about my gameplay rules, some of which I've discussed in this video, and also consider becoming a channel member if you like this content. Um, my channel members get bonus videos, live streams, and you get to vote in polls uh, for my upcoming content. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell. I will see you all with part two of this video very soon. Thanks again for watching.